In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get your MIDI clips to display only notes within your chosen scale, so that it's extremely easy to compose pieces of music in any scale you want without the risk of inputting wrong notes and without having to figure out which notes fit in your scale. So it's actually very easy to do this with Ableton. What we've got to do is first of all, create a MIDI clips. I'm going to highlight this section, right click and select insert MIDI clip. The next thing I need to do is input all of the notes in the scale that I wish to work with. In this case, I'm going to choose the A natural minor scale because it's extremely easy to remember as it contains all of the white keys and none of the black keys. So I'm going to press B on my keyboard and simply insert all the MIDI notes which make up your chosen scale. If you don't know what they are, just do a quick Google search online and you'll get loads of images showing you exactly what notes exist within your scale. Now, when I've inserted one octave's worth of notes, I'm going to highlight all of the notes, press Option on my keyboard or Alt if you're on a Windows keyboard and simply drag and drop the notes up all the remaining octaves. Now, once you have all the MIDI notes for your scale drawn in, all you have to do is press fold and the only notes that will be displayed are the notes that you drew in. In this case, only the notes which exist within the A natural minor scale and all of the notes which aren't in the scale will disappear and you won't be able to see them at all Therefore, the, there isn't even a slight chance that you could input a wrong note. Now, of course, the way they are now, if you played back this MIDI file, you'd also hear all of these notes played back at the same time. So there's a couple of things we could do here. Number one, we could highlight them all and mute them by pushing the key with the number zero on your keyboard. However, even if you mute them, they're still taking up a little bit of space in the first beat of the MIDI file. So if you wanted to input a MIDI note somewhere here, you'd have to unmute one of them, which is not that convenient. So there is a second method I prefer to use, and that would be to turn off the loop if the loop is on, make sure you turn it off, and then bring the start point back a little bit highlight all the notes, drag them behind B1, and then bring the start point of the MIDI file, which you can either click the start marker here or click this and drag up on the number. Bring this back to one. Now, your MIDI file will only start playing from B1, but those MIDI notes still exist behind B1. So if I click somewhere else and then I go back to the MIDI file, you see the MIDI notes are still there, but I kind of have to scroll to the left to see them and they are behind my starting marker. So when I press play, it's not going to play through them. Even if you play from before the MIDI clip, you're still not going to hear them. They're not going to be triggered. Now, once you've made your MIDI clip containing only the notes within the scale you want to use, you can export this MIDI clip and drag it back into any future project to use again. However, with Ableton, there's two problems that can occur unless you take care of them before exporting the MIDI clip. Number one, Ableton doesn't allow you to import a MIDI clip with muted notes in it. So you would have to take all of the MIDI notes, press the key with the number zero in it and unmute them if you had already muted them. The second thing is Ableton can cause significant errors if you drag a MIDI clip in with the MIDI notes behind the start marker. Now, other doors like Logic Pro don't have this problem at all, but with Ableton, it's quite a serious problem. So you must make sure before exporting the MIDI clip for use in future projects that you have all of the MIDI notes unmuted and brought back to the beginning of your start marker. That way, when you click on your MIDI clip, right click and select export MIDI clip, and then you export it. I'll just export it on my desktop for now with the name A natural minor. And then you import it back into Ableton. It's gonna work just fine. 
Now to import it back into Ableton, all you have to do is allow Ableton to see your desktop from the browser under the places section. So I've already done this. If you can't see the folder where your MIDI clips are saved, all you've got to do is click add folder, navigate to where they're saved and press open. So I'm going to click on my desktop. Here is my MIDI clip. I'm going to click and drag it into Ableton. I'm going to click no on this because I don't want my project's tempo or time signature to change. And then here is the MIDI clip with all of the notes in the A natural minor scale. Now before I use it for composition, I am going to bring back the start point just a little, zoom out, take the MIDI notes, drag them back, and then bring the starting marker back to just after the MIDI notes. Now I'm going to deactivate loop and this way I can extend the length of a MIDI clip as much as I like. And you can see the MIDI notes are just before the start marker. So when we play through this, those MIDI notes will not be triggered whatsoever. If they were in front of the start point, they would be triggered. And it doesn't sound too great. So put them back and you're good to go. Now, just a final note on this, you can make as many of these MIDI clips for different scales as you like. You can find all the scale formulas online very easily by just searching for them and save these MIDI clips in a folder that you can name MIDI files or scales or something that suits you. And then it will be very easy to choose any scale you want to use for any song you want to compose in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you did, please consider subscribing and giving it a like, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.